Jesus preached the Sermon from, known as the Sermon on the Mount. So this is the Beatitude site for the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, we're going to go out to the porch here of this lovely place, read the sermon, and then you will have some time for to meditate on your own. Jerusalem, you will see mostly stones and buildings. And the beauty of Galilee is that you still see it the way it was. It's even less, less populated than what it was in Jesus' days. So we see more just rocks and less buildings and less people than they were here in Jesus' days. So Galilee is the opposite way from what we're going to have in Jerusalem, which is very busy, very commercialized, and so on. So the beauty you really find in, Jeru in Galilee rather than in Jerusalem. This mountain where we are standing now has been suggested to be the mountain where Jesus preached the sermon from. See, once again, the Bible does not really tell us which mountain it was. It just said that he went up on a mountain. And if you look around the Sea of Galilee, all what you see are mountains. Why that mountain here? Most probably because this mountain is the closest to Capernaum. We still need to remember, you see the building down there by the big tree? That's where Capernaum is. We're going to be there later on. We still need to be that most people who actually knew Jesus were from Capernaum, even though we know very well that there were people from other parts of the country who came. It said they came even from Samaria and from Judea and from Galilee and from Decapolis and from all around the Sea of Galilee. So we really know they were from all over. But still the concentration, the place where he was known more than at any other place would have been Capernaum. So we do assume that he would have gone close to Capernaum to preach a sermon from. And then this mountain would fit well into this, into this picture. But there are other possibilities. Other mountains could have actually been the place. No one, again, I want to insist on that, that we are not really, again, on the place, on the spot where we know for sure it was, but it was somewhere on this area. Just uh, the old Byzantine church that was here 1,500 years ago was down where those olive trees are now, see, on the slope of the hill, closer to the water. Then when this church here was built in 1935, that's a brand new church that was just built in our, this century. And by the way, the money was provided by the Italians during the time of Mussolini. That's when this church was actually built in the late 1960s. So the spot itself, as I said, I, cannot, I have seen a lot of places, but every time I come here, I can fell in love again in this beautiful place here. Probably one of one of the very most important places in my life. I'll share just a few words about that. Uh, this may be one of being one of the two most important places in my life, right here. I uh, I'm really not worthy to read these words. No man ever spake like Jesus did, and I don't really know that any man is worthy to read these words because of their wonder. But Jesus said in John chapter 5, in verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. As you all know, blessed means happy. Most folks, these words would be contradiction. Happy are those that mourn, or they shall be comforted. When I was here two years ago with Jim, some more preachers. I came on the heels of a very tragic time in my life. I had been mourning for years on the inside. Mourning. Mourning. Even knowing that, that the scripture says that blessed are they that mourn. I wasn't happy with the mourning. No one is. No one is happy with pain. No one can be happy about heartbreak and brokenness. And I had been mourning for years. And yet, on the outside, I had to or I thought I had to have a facade that said everything was fine on the inside, but it wasn't. There was great mourning, great heartbreak on the inside. And the week before we came here, uh, another uh, a tragic thing happened in my life with my son. And uh, just a week. Then we left and we came to Israel. And I came fairly hard and fairly bitter and fairly anger, anger, much mourning when I got here. Went through all of the sites that we've been through, really nothing really touched me. You know, I've been in the ministry for 14 years at that time. I knew all the scriptures. But here I was, and I really wasn't experiencing what I thought I should. And the reason being because it's not what was on the outside, but what was on the inside. Morning. 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 But here, we came here and we heard a preacher, and I don't remember his name, one of the guys, but we've sat out there on that hill. He just stood up and all he did was read these scriptures and then we prayed and, and then we had our free time. And I went down in the orange grove and just got lost down there just by myself and with God in the orange grove down there. And I just really got talking to God. And I said, God, I'm not happy. On the inside, things aren't right. I'm, I'm hurting. I'm tired. And I said, Lord, to tell you the truth, I'm going to throw in the towel when I get back home. I'm going to quit. I can't do this anymore. And I reached up about that time, and I just took hold of something. It was a tree limb, you know. When I come down, I looked in my hand. My hand was full of hearts. If you, if you see the leaves of the tree of the orange grove, you see that the little leaves are in the shape of hearts. And I looked at that. And then these words came to me again. Blessed heart that and God spoke to me and God said to me just as clear as, as you can speak to me God said hang on son comfort is coming now God does not take away all the mourning you may be mourning and, and this verse does not say that God's going to wipe all that mourning away and you won't hurt anymore but what the verse does say is that God will give you comfort in the midst of the mourning that God will give you peace in the midst of the storm that God will, will give you comfort in the midst of the morning. I did not need to quit because I was mourning, God said. Well, that was a great experience down in those orange rows for me. And, and God said, hang on, hang on, child. Comfort is coming. And I think the next day or so, my brother and I were talking very seriously in our room. And, and he, this man is a man of God, and he spoke very directly to me because he loves me so much, and I love him so much. He said some things to me that, that no one else had ever said to me in our room in Jerusalem. We had already gotten to Jerusalem by this time. Said some things that I'd never heard someone else say to me. And it made me even angrier. But then we come to the part where we went to the Wailing Wall, which we'll go to. And I just felt drawn of God. God said, come. God said, go. And, and I just put on a yarmulke, a Jewish yarmulke. And I went down to the Wailing Wall. And they were all down there doing this, you know, praying. And I just got right in amongst them. And I got my Bible and I said, Lord, did you hear what old Brick said to me? And God said, yes. It's true. 
As God said again, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Hang on, child. Comfort is coming. Now, in the midst of mourning, you may be going through some tough times. In the midst of the mourning, or the pain, or the heartbreak, the hurt, God promises he'll, he'll give you comfort because you're his. He'll give it to you along the way. And then one day, praise his blessed name. One day, one day, it'll all be God. One day, God will take all the mourning away. Father, I pray for every person here. And I pray, dear Lord, that we might experience the touch of God as we walk these lands. We feel a special drawing to this land. We feel a part of this land because our blessed and darling Savior lives and walks here. Father, we feel that your presence in a special way here. Speak to us. And those in this group who may be mourning or hurting or in some sort of problem in their life, I pray to your God that, that you would send that comfort. Comfort. That they might also hang on to the day we see Jesus face to face. In his precious, lovely name I pray. Amen. You're free to roam. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, 
For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.